growth. A stabilizing PC business is one thing, but for Intel stock to be worth buying, the company's got to show its chips pull their own weight in the AI era. I asked CEO Pat Gelsinger how he'll compete about the homemade AI chip designs from Amazon, Microsoft, and Google. We also talked about the debt ceiling, China, and closing the Tower Semiconductor acquisition. Yeah, and we're going to compete. You know, we're delivering products like our Gaudi 2, we just taped out Gaudi 3, that we're delivering some you know, incredible performance results. But that's this generation or essentially the learning part of it. You know, it's much more the inferencing part. And we expect the vast majority of the workloads will be how do you use those models. And some of that will happen in the cloud with what we'll call batch inferencing. But much more of that's going to happen on premise. If I'm an enterprise customer, you know, I'm going to take those models and run them on prem with my my local data. And we see that as being a driver for the enterprise server business. We're also going to compete for the batch inferencing in the cloud, but it's also going to happen on your PC, right? You're going to start using AI capabilities on your local PC. That's going to be, you know, like generating that next sentence for you. That's going to be doing eye tracking when you're in Teams or Zoom, right? It's going to be doing language translation, you know, for you in real time when you speak to somebody from another location. All of that's going to happen primarily at the client or at the edge. So we see these AI use cases, these AI workloads being across every dimension. Some will be in the cloud, but many are going to be on the edge and in your client, and we're going to make all of that happen. And we're democratizing AI for everyone. Let me ask you about Tower Semiconductor and that key important approval in China. Recently in comments to the Wall Street Journal, you said you feel like that's making progress. How much progress? is that making and are you in position of possibly being a bargaining chip in a geopolitical tug of war which seems to flare up unexpectedly at any given moment yeah overall and i was just in china a couple of weeks ago and it was a great trip to china you know extraordinary enthusiasm for my employees there you know strong response from the customers an important market for us but reinforce this in every one of the government meetings that we had. And the simple message from the Chinese government meetings was open for business. And we're seeing some of that economic green shoots emerging there. You know, that said, we raised tower in every one of those uh, conversations, the importance uh, to us. Obviously, there's a level of uh, geopolitic uh, here, but uh, we're seeing uh, progress and we're enthused to finish that uh, deal as part of our overall uh, uh, foundry strategy. We want to fill in more of the node capabilities that Tower will give us, and we're working hard to get that done as quickly as possible. Are you factoring in the latest um, Washington friction, the debt ceiling standoff, into how you look at the, the rest of the year? And um, do, do you have any kind of message about that to the market? Well, you know, overall, and I think every business leader would say the same thing, you know, let's not trifle with a uh, fairly fragile economic uh, outlook. You know, this is something that, you know, debt ceilings, politics, you know, you know, continue to help us to move forward with a positive economic cycle. There's, you know, still a lot of uncertainty in the macro. You know, we have assumed a fairly modest view of the uh, macro. We think there's a lot of uncertainty around the world, and that's so our outlooks and our guidance uh, is quite tempered as a result because we believe there's still great risk in the macro, you know, for many reasons, that being just one of them, you know, but we're still in a uh, armed conflict in uh, Europe, uncertainty in Asia.